like a, a small introduction. I don't know if you can see right now my screen. Yes, I need to, uh, yeah. Uh, okay, so as I told you, this is the third edition and uh, it's not an honor and a pleasure for me to, uh, to have you here. Uh, we started this event historically on the exact day when open banking uh, came live in, in Europe. Uh, it was the 15th of uh, September 2019. Uh, Fink were uh, already prepared uh, an aggregation platform at that stage and it was like a thought for us, how, sh how can we, uh, first of all, uh, show to the people that uh, our infrastructure is working and secondly, uh, prepare the banks that, uh, that the innovation is coming and uh, will start to, uh, to arise uh, based on this uh, data availability of open banking. And we thought to do this uh, instead of uh, sending a PR uh, announcement to you know, media, we thought let's do this open banking hackathon because then uh, the, the banks will see themselves how the new innovators are thinking about open banking use cases. And this was 2019, then it was 2020 last year uh, when uh, we had this pandemic uh, on top of us. So we needed to do it everything online, but this gave us the opportunity to enlarge it because initially it was only live in Romania. Right now we have teams from a lot of uh, places uh, from the region and not only, I will tell you more about this, uh, and yeah, it, yeah uh, last year was uh, also a big success. And we said, okay, we need to, right now it's like a tradition. We need to do it. There were some of our friends uh, from, uh, from uh, uh, the banking ecosystem who uh, from the beginning of the year said to us, we will budget uh, the support for open banking hackathon. So we, we are somehow, uh, you know, there, there's uh, something that we need to do uh, from now on. Uh, so we did it, uh, we started also to prepare this new Open Banking Hackathon edition, and we believe this will be even bigger than last year. Just for you to know, last year we had uh, almost uh, 15,000, 15,000 uh, guys, uh, peop uh, persons that uh, uh, view, viewed the Open Banking Hackathon Gala. So the audience is uh, quite broad. Uh, and last year we had uh, five teams in the final. Uh, it was uh, Rom from Romania, Bulgaria, Greece, uh, Croatia, Czech Republic, and, uh, uh, and uh, Czech Republic and uh, yeah, and Bulgaria. Uh, five countries, uh, all present on the on the stage, and the the, the, the awards went. Uh, the the biggest award went uh, five thousand euro went to. Uh, Czech Republic team, and then the second uh, was Croatia, and the third was uh, Romania. This were the uh, uh, the awards. So this year, okay, we started today. Uh, there are different things that the uh, the teams will uh, will have uh, in their schedule. Uh, we will prepare the teams so that on Saturday uh, we will select from fifteen teams that start this hackathon. We will select the, the best five uh, if, uh, to be presented in, in front of the uh, of the jury on Sunday when it is the big event. And we also have as keynote speaker uh, uh, Panagiotis uh, that is also here today uh, to moderate this discussion later on. Uh, he will do a keynote speech for us. He is a very well-known opinion leader in the Central and Eastern Europe uh, fintech uh, innovation ecosystem. And we are very glad that we convinced him to be uh, with us on the demo night and the words uh, ceremony gala. Um, so today, the, uh, just to uh, remind you, uh, the teams are fighting for the biggest prize, which is 5,000 euro in cash. Uh, there are Five days, he started today, uh, they uh, received access to open, uh, open banking data uh, through our uh, API infrastructure, uh, uh, through our uh, API. So they can access different banks in the region in the sandbox mode uh, through our infrastructure. And they start right now to develop different applications on top of that data. Uh, 
it is mandatory for them to showcase that the application is somehow working. So it's not just like a PowerPoint, it's also an application uh, that is programmed uh, and there is a software development involved in that, in that app application. Um, there are uh, three different uh, fields they, uh, they can approach. Uh, of course, one of the most popular is the open banking for individuals. Uh, so type of, uh, some different types of personal finance management application. We, we know from the experience, this is something that it is uh, one of the, uh, the teams that they, uh, they start to, to build. Um, and also the second area we wanted to see how they think and what ideas do they have is on open banking for businesses. Uh, and the third uh, field will be uh, open banking for IoT. I want to be very straightforward. We put this team even from the first edition, but uh, nobody started to, uh, to approach it, uh, but we are still envisioning uh, a way in which open banking can be uh, involved in uh, our interaction with wearables like Fitbit uh, or Apple, uh, uh, Apple uh, wearables, or I don't know, uh, Open banking put in the Android Auto for uh, in Volkswagen, uh, Vol uh, Volkswagen cars uh, or whatever. So there is still a place that we want to. We put it. We uh, and we hope that there are some teams that have the courage to to go on the open banking for IoT space. Uh, these are the teams here. You can see there are teams from uh, Romania, Bulgaria, Cyprus, Hungary, Slovenia, Czech Republic, Greece, uh, and Poland. Uh, as a matter of fact, the, the team from Cyprus is quite interesting. They are a startup as a, uh, headquartered in South Africa in Johannesburg. And uh, yeah, uh, one of the founders is from Cyprus and uh, they, uh, uh, submitted that application as, as they are from Cyprus, but they are working in Johannesburg uh, on the uh, on the uh, this project. Uh, we had in total uh, we selected these fifteen uh, teams from uh, forty one. Uh, in total, uh, there were even uh, teams from uh, New Zealand or uh, Tajikistan that applied for this uh, hackathon. Uh, we would have selected them if uh, they were be, uh, but we, we, we put like a, like a filter uh, for these uh, teams to be selected. So we have 15 teams, more than 40 developers are working already in uh, uh, building their projects for, for Sunday uh, to get into the final. Um, we want to thank, uh, of course, this well, this is possible only because there is a big support from a lot of partners that we have uh, in the region. First of all, the main partner, uh, Microsoft, uh, was quite uh, quite supportive for us in uh, in providing the support needed to to build up the all the logistics. For example, all the teams received through DHL. Uh, yesterday, a pack, a swag pack with t-shirts and uh, a lot of goodies so that uh, we are thinking that although it is something online, uh, there should be like a physical involvement with this experience. And that's why we are sending uh, something that we are, we are calling it swag pack, like some boxes in which they have uh, different agendas, different, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, goodies and swag. Uh, from uh, from us and from the uh, from the sponsors, um, we have uh, Google Cloud also as a partner uh, in in our hackathon. National Bank of Romania is an institutional partner and is traditionally an institutional partner. In all the editions, the National Bank of Romania uh, was uh, with us, and uh, in the jury uh, there was. Uh, a representative from the uh, supervisory division of uh, payments, supervisory division of National Bank of Romania. Uh, and this year will be the same. Uh, we have four banks uh, and quite big names in the region like uh, Erste, Becere, uh, the subsidiary of uh, Erste in Romania, Alpha Bank Romania, Raiffeisen Bank International uh, and OTP Bank uh, are also uh, supporters of this event. 
And we have also a lot of other uh, um, important uh, partners with us like CMS uh, and Qualitans and ZTech, like technology, uh, technology partners, they, they supported and they, uh, uh, and they contributed with the sponsorship to this event. Uh, as well as DHL Mindspace. Mindspace put, uh, uh, put all the space to us from the first edition until now. In the first edition, when it was live, we had like a, a, an entire floor uh, put uh, in our, uh, uh, put uh, uh, made available for us for three days. And the developers even slept there uh, doing uh, uh, the work to the projects. And we have also digital intelligence who helped us for, uh, for promoting this event, which has a, a big hype right now in, in social media, as you saw, I believe. Uh, there are not only this, there is a big number of communities. I won't name it all, a lot of accelerators, a lot of uh, media and community partners that are supporting us, that are spreading the word, that are doing a lot of awareness for this. Uh, I, I keep uh, saying it, although not uh, all the uh, new generation uh, see it as a very cool. It's like uh, a Eurovision for fintech innovation in the region. Uh, and uh, there is a big, uh, big uh, awareness uh, right now on this event. Right now, uh, the, today's event, the idea came from the fact that from the beginning, from the first edition, it was like, okay, we are bringing these developers. They are thinking of different uh, th different ways of disrupting the, uh, the, uh, the ecosystem, the financial ecosystem. But still, the main and the most important players are, as a matter of fact, the existing banking institutions and the existing technology providers. They are, as a matter of fact, the, the users of uh, the ideas and the innovation that the fintechs and the small teams are, uh, are starting to, to, uh, uh, to create. And they are also the ones that uh, should be aware of this and uh, should start to promote as much as possible the implementation of this quite global mega trend in financial services. So that's why uh, each and every year we are doing this open banking uh, hackathon uh, round table, which is a closed event only with, uh, with different bankers and technology experts from, uh, from the region. And we aim for some discussions to be like uh, exchange of ideas and the exchange of experiences uh, in creating open banking uh, projects so that, I don't know, uh, a Romanian banker will find out something from a Slovak banker or a, a Bulgarian banker will find out uh, something from a, uh, from a, a, a consultant in, in Vienna uh, about how these things are, are working so that we can uh, make it to work even more. That's why uh, it's Panagiotis uh, Triaris, our uh, moderator, and I will do also the, uh, the owner of uh, presenting the, the panel. We have Modelina Popa from uh, financial services, uh, as financial services industry director in CE for Microsoft. We have Tomasz Barbaric, uh, chief business development officer at 365 Bank in Slovakia. We have Razvan Enake, uh, senior sales executive Google Cloud at Google. We have Isabella, as a matter of fact, we don't have Isabella, we have, uh, we have Liviu, yeah? Liviu? Yes, yes. Isabella is not coming, yeah? We have Liviu instead of Isabella from uh, the Omnichannel uh, Department in OTP Bank. We have Christian uh, Mustaza, Deputy Executive Director of Retail at Banca Comerciale Romana. Tania Imamovic, Open API Business Owner at Raiffeisen Bank International, overseeing the whole operations in the whole project, all the projects in uh, Open Banking in Raiffeisen Bank International. Uh, Mario, I don't know. Mario, did you? Uh, uh, are you are you here with us? Mario, I don't know if he, if he came he didn't because manage. I only see my screen. So no, he didn't no. manage to join just yet. No, no, no. Okay, Mario, uh, maybe he will come back. Uh, come come here later from uh, Unicredit Bulbank from uh, from Bulgaria. Sergey Sergey Pentelev uh, is the GM from Varangold Bank Sofia. Uh, 
Uh, we have also Radu from Constantinescu, co-founder and deputy general manager for Qualitans, one of the uh, technology providers already known in the region for different uh, innovative projects with the banks. And Alex uh, Lapushan, Alexander Lapushan, CEO and funding partner, same a big important uh, technology provider for the banks with a lot of uh, experience in the uh, uh, innovation projects within the banking ecosystem. And from CMS, we have uh, Katalin Horvat from, uh, from Hungary, from Budapest, uh, and Philip Mark from uh, CMS Vienna. Uh, both of them sharing us some, uh, uh, some uh, experiences related to open banking projects from the you know, lawyer point of view uh, in, uh, uh, in, in Central and Eastern Europe. Uh, right now, I want to give the floor to, uh, to, uh, to Panagiotis. Uh, Panagiotis, are you, uh, are you here? You can take the yes. floor from now and it's your, uh, it's your uh, pleasure to, to discuss and to moderate this, uh, this discussion. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be able to be part of the, of the event. I find it very interesting, as well as the opportunity to kind of bring everybody together from, from the region. And I think there, there, are, lots, there are lots of uh, learnings uh, to, be, to be seen uh, along the process. So thank you again. Um, as you said, uh, Cosmin, so my name is, uh, is Panagiotis. Uh, I've spent my, my career in... Uh, yeah, in the financial services industry. Um, and I think I'm kind of lucky enough to have been able to be on both sides of the, of the fence. I've been uh, working on uh, for, uh, for typical incumbents, for, for banks, for I've been also working with, with fintechs. I'm now, I happen to be on the, on the fintech side. And I think it's very uh, interesting to be able to discuss today uh, open banking and then have a discussion and exchange views. So I would... Uh, like to kind of keep the, the discussion in a, in a sense that we exchange the views, that we try to understand what's happening in, uh, uh, in uh, different countries and to understand what are the similarities, what are the challenges, and at the end of the day, learn from, uh, from each other and have a, a very open uh, and insightful uh, discussion. Um, so that's a very, uh, very short introduction. I would say that we kind of uh, jump to the discussion and uh, I think on top of what uh, Cosmin has mentioned, I think he has uh, made a good introduction of everybody. But just to, to break the ice, I would say that uh, very quickly we go through the round and I would like to maybe start with a couple of uh, things from, from your side. So I would say that uh, the first one on a professional basis, so if you can just uh, very quickly uh, share with us what kind of connection with, with you have with uh, open banking. So in terms of your role, in terms of uh, what you have been doing in your company. And second of all, I would like to ask for, uh, for a personal piece of information. And this is um, if you can give us an idea of a use case that personally for you has uh, been uh, very um, helpful in your day to day uh, the past uh, couple of years, and hopefully everybody can uh, identify himself or herself with uh, such a use case. So I, I think we can start to, with uh, the order that we see uh, people in the screen. So if I take uh, Catalin for uh, starters, and then we go to Sergey and leave you, and then to the rest of the people. Thank you very much. I'm Catalin Horvath from CMS Hungary. Uh, as you know, CMS is a, a big international law firm, and uh, we are working here in the CEE countries as a, a joint working group in fintech matters and, and banking matters. And personally, I uh, usually deal with the technical side of fintech and uh, banking digitalization projects, which means uh, that uh, I'm involved in PSD2, PISP, AISP licenses, etc. Uh, before the uh, Hungarian National Bank, uh, together, of course, with uh, our banking team, and uh, in case of uh, passporting licenses or a cross-border project, we are working very closely with our CEE CMS offices. So we have a quite good international footprint, uh, not just in Europe, but in other uh, more than 
70 countries in the world. Uh, we do local and cross-border assignment as well. And uh, as a AID, which, which is, is very helpful, is that um, I just heard from our colleagues from Ukraine that uh, PSD2 is so successful in the EU that uh, Ukraine decided to introduce a very similar uh, regulation and uh, legal regime in Ukraine uh, as well. So they, uh, the, the PSD2 implementation in a, a local version for Ukraine is under progress, uh, which I think uh, itself uh, proved that PSD2 is a quite good thing. And uh, the, not just the incumbent market players, but the fintech companies has a huge opportunity here uh, not just in the EU, but outside of the EU as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sergey. Hi all. Uh, my name is Sergey Pantelev. I'm GM of uh, Sofia branch of Barring Gold Bank AG. Uh, the branch is covering all the operations of the bank here in the region of uh, Southern and Eastern Europe, but we can even extend to Central and Eastern Europe. We would like to be perceived as the bank of the market-based lending industry. So goes without saying, we are exposed to open banking, uh, latest developments across the board and all the projects that we are doing, or we are, and we are carefully listening to our partners, how come they integrate those into their models in order to better service their clients, both on the side of the investors, on, on the side of uh, the ones that are taking the, uh, borrowing the money or et cetera, whatever else is on the back. Um, <clears throat> so here in the region, uh, we see a lot of hype about it. I don't know how much is the footprint actually, if we're talking about the FinTech and how much this turns into reality for the consumers, but it's growing definitely. And I'm a huge believer. And uh, most of us, used to work in banks or being bankers currently, we understand that still the region is hyper, how to say, concent con concentrated into bankers' hands. And I, I think it's up to us to really push forward uh, the open banking as we know it and as we want to see it together with the fintech. So I'm a big preacher of finding uh, cooperation and uh, areas where we can uh, find the synergies for us and for our partners rather than compete. And ultimately, I think uh, to do that always with the mind that we should do it in the sense of the consumer, doesn't matter is it individual or, uh, or corporate. So yeah, that's much it. Thank you. I think you have addressed the, the issue of uh, the topic of partnerships, which is something that we are going to come back later on. Thank you, leave you. Hi, my name is uh, Liviu Dragomir. Uh, I'm uh, from OTP Bank Romania. Um, not so uh, uh, with many years of experience in the banking. I'm quite new, but uh, I have some uh, experience on uh, the hackathon side, uh, like uh, Cosmin uh, is doing this. Uh, I was part in the uh, organizing team for uh, a legal hackathon for two editions. So I'm strong supporter of uh, innovation all over. Uh, also here in uh, in the new domain that I joined banking. Uh, and um, one of the reasons why I saw in, in the, this, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, similar with what we are doing in, in inside the, our company. Uh, we are also touching the points of uh, technology partners, of uh, in-house uh, innovation, and uh, uh, also on the startup area. So we are benefiting or trying to, to be as much as supportive to the open banking. Uh, and we are also on the same uh, pace that uh, Sergey said that uh, we should look at, at partnership, uh, not uh, as uh, fighting with uh, fintechs or technological companies and startups. So I think 
uh, we all can benefit the clients and uh, when the clients uh, benefit from this uh, also us as uh, banks uh, we we benefit from this so yeah pretty much uh, that's it makes sense thank you very much uh i think we should now it's uh, up to christian to tell us his his view of the things Hi everybody, uh, my name is Christian Mustaza. I'm um, working in BCR, a part of Erste Group, and I'm responsible for the uh, part of digital and contact center in the retail distribution. So basically, uh, I'm um, directly involved in the, in the implementation of PSD2 and open banking in, in BCR. We are uh, somewhere in the, from in, in the part where we are let's say touching the ocean with the finger where you where we have implemented something from the AISP uh, we we try to see how the customers are embracing the the this new uh, elements for for them um, i know that in in other parts like uk this is a very evolved topic uh, the open banking even though it didn't need so much regulation as we have in the in the region. Maybe the, sometimes I'm wondering uh, if, the, let's say the the not so standardized APIs or uh, or various other elements that uh, maybe should have been uh, somehow more aligned would have had uh, a bigger impact on the on the open banking. But I I'm seeing every day uh, or mostly every day things related to, to, to fintechs, to open banking. We are uh, directly in contact with, uh, with many companies in the, in the EU for, uh, for the implementation of, of uh, new features or new topics. And we are, I would say, among the pioneers uh, in touch with the open banking in, uh, in Romania. I will not say among the first because <laughs> I don't want to upset Cosmin, who is very proud. <laughs> but uh, nevertheless, we are in a, in a close contact, and uh, we hope for a very good co collaboration with all the companies that are uh, are having open banking uh, topics in the in the region. Uh, for me personally, because I think the second question was if uh, on a personal side how this open banking has uh, impacted me. Um, to be honest, I, I use very much this uh, gathering of all, all the accounts in one, uh, one banking application because I have working in this domain in the banking industry, I have accounts with, media, with, uh, with various other banks, but not all the customers are, uh, you know, uh, having secondary third bank or so on. So for me, it, it, is, a, it is giving me a great impact. I, uh, I would like to expand, for example, open banking towards all the products, not only current account, because customers have other, other type of accounts, loans, deposits, uh, investments, and so on with other institutions. And I think this would be a great impact to have them all under one umbrella. Yeah, thank, thank you very much. I think you have addressed a couple of interesting points. I mean, uh, you have addressed the most typical use case, the account aggregation, which I guess is the starting point. Uh, I think you have also addressed the other products, which I think is going in the, in the direction of uh, open finance and not so much open banking. So I would say the next wave. And uh, you have also tried to have a comparison between what's happening in the UK and what's happening in, in EU. I think that's also the, an interesting discussion, but uh, we probably need a bit more time on this. Um, Maybe now we switch to, to Tanya. I think uh, Tanya's role is obvious why she is relevant for the for the discussion, but maybe you can elaborate a bit on this and give us a, a personal use case that has been helpful for, for you, Tanya. Yes, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. So, uh, yeah, I'm Tanya Imamovic. I'm uh, the Open API business owner for Raiffeisen Bank International, which in a nutshell means that I'm responsible for uh, different ways of how Open API, so not just regulatory part, which mainly is called Open Banking, but Open APIs can help our group to reach uh, uh, the vision and, and the goals that we have. So uh, what does this mean? It means that basically uh, I was responsible for PSD2 implementation within our EU markets. Um, 
uh, which uh, is Romania, Croatia, Bulgaria, Hungary, uh, Czech Republic, and Slovakia. I'm also responsible for consumption as a service, meaning uh, discovering together with our network banks how we can use uh, currently uh, PSD2 APIs to maybe offer some better services to our customers. Uh, but not only that, we as a group uh, believe uh, very much in open finance and in future of open innovation. This is why we are looking at uh, which type of data and services uh, we want to expose uh, and with which third parties, fintechs, or even customers we want, we want to integrate via APIs in the future, right? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, this is the, the fourth year of the journey uh, for the group. So I think that now we are already kind of beyond those, you know, buzzwords of open banking. What does this mean for the banking industry? Uh, what kind of change this will bring, etc. So I think that now we have a really realistic view on the topic. Uh, my personal opinion is that this is one of the most transformative topics for the bank as the organization. Uh, I mean, moving away from the closed organization where we use, where we are used to serve our customers only via our own direct channels, being digital channels or physical channels doesn't matter towards the organization that is open to cooperate with uh, anyone from the ecosystem uh, around us in order to contribute or to bring better services to our customers. So this is uh, for me personally the biggest value that uh, open APIs or open banking depending uh, how, how the, this is defined for each one of us is bringing to the organization. Regarding the use cases uh, for me it's um, yeah, I think that it's pity that we are kind of still stuck in this PSD2 regulatory area, right? And even there, we don't see uh, the usage as we were hoping to see because of the, you know, it's a fact. We live in Europe. We have many fragmented markets. We have different standards implemented across those uh, different markets. So in the end, it's really hard to, to achieve this open data economy or bring some, some really nice use cases across multiple markets. So uh, I don't think that we really actually see the use cases uh, uh, that can really bring new values for the customers. I personally think that once we open new products and not only that, but once other industries open up as well, this will be the moment when we will really achieve uh, this openness within EU and bring uh, uh, additional value services to our customers. Thank you, Tanya. I think you have addressed once again this uh, transition, let's say from open finance to, from open banking to open finance, which was, uh, let's say, addressed also before. And uh, that's something that we will, for sure, discuss uh, going forward. If now I can give the floor to Thomas. Uh, so Thomas, uh, first question, as we said, uh, uh, professional. And second of all, maybe a personal use case that is your favorite, and hopefully you have one. Hello, everyone. My name is Tomas Barbaric. I... I'm the co-creator of 365 Bank. Uh, it's actually the first mobile first bank uh, or challenger bank in Slovakia. Uh, it's a spin-off of uh, our mother bank, Postova Bank or Postbank in English. Uh, and I, as I was the co-creator of the bank, I was former head of uh, channels and product management uh, in the bank. And uh, actually uh, a few weeks ago, I just accepted uh, an opportunity to build uh, an investment digital platform for uh, for the group. So uh, this is something that I'm going to uh, mm, to develop as uh, thoughts, ideas, and uh, potentially product. Uh, and uh, regarding PSD2 or open banking, um, actually, Slovakia, despite uh, the fact that the, the the legislation has been put in place uh, uh, for quite a few uh, some time. Uh, I think that uh, that real cases are not present in Slovakia yet, but what I feel uh, is that the market is uh, is about to change. Uh, there are first uh, first ideas coming to the market or first rumors. We have some uh, uh, wealth management apps that uh, that are um, that announced that uh, they want to uh, do some open banking PFMs. Uh, and we are also in talks with uh, PSD2 aggregators uh, um, in the topic of, uh, of this digital wealth management or investment platform. Uh, as I'm a big fan of uh, PSD2 personally, 
I would like to uh, to bring some new kind of product to the to the market, and BSD two and open open banking is uh, something that I believe in that could uh, potentially bring something new and and something useful for uh, for clients in Slovakia. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you very much. Um, if we can jump now to maybe Madalena, so you can tell us your uh, professional kind of uh, relation to open banking and your personal use case. Hi, Panagiotis and hi, Tim. Um, happy to be here with you in this event. I hope you hear me well. Um, so what, what I wanted to mention for, for this session is um, that I'm very happy to see both banks and ISVs and uh, fintechs at the same point and also technology providers because I think that um, the future for sure it stays with um, a combination of all these technology plus fintech plus banks and the open banking um, area it's one of the most interesting one and the most interesting trend that we see for the future um, what I would hope to see also is um, another conversation which is not necessarily related to PSD2 and compliance because this is already old stuff. Uh, in 2018, majority of the European countries, um, they, they were supposed to, to be compliant with uh, PSD2. But the most interesting and juicy part of, of the PSD2 is the monetization part, which we can call it open banking. And only when we start to speak about monetization, we understand the value of open banking. Um, also the fact that right now, a lot of interest industries are mixing together. Um, I see retailers wanting to become uh, fintechs or neo banks. I see telco companies investing in their fintech spin-offs. Um, so with all this effervescence that, that we see in the market and all this appetite for um, offering financial services um, and also the banks wanting to integrate with other third parties, definitely uh, I see an uh, inter interesting future for, for the open banking. Um, for sure, if I would speak, not necessarily personal, but rather representing the, the company that I'm in, Microsoft, uh, we are hoping that our cloud technology, as, as we have it right now, we invested a lot in these areas, in solutions for open banking, for customer experience, for risk, for security. And all this, um, we are hoping that by being in touch with you, with the banks and the fintechs, we can offer the right platforms and the right support in order to develop interesting products. And also we are hoping to, to partner with more and more partners um, like Cosmin that they developed open banking solutions on top of our cloud platforms. So thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, Madalina. Um, shall we go to Philip? So Philip, if you can uh, tell us your experience related to open banking and your personal use case. Yeah, good afternoon to all of you and thank you for the kind uh, invitation to speak at this panel. Uh, my name is Philip Mark. I'm a partner in uh, the regulatory team of CMS in Vienna. Uh, I'm dealing and pricing uh, uh, beside banks, also fintechs in uh, uh, the specific field of PSD2 especially. Uh, we have done some work for uh, fintechs as well as for banks in connection with uh, uh, access to account and uh, dedicated interfaces, which has to be uh, in place. Uh, for this purpose, we have teamed up with uh, some audit experts uh, reviewing uh, the dedicated interfaces and uh, we have run the, the legal stuff, uh, so uh, we know uh, where they come from, the fintechs, as well as the banks, where, where are the concerns. Um, uh, what we have uh, seen so far in the Austrian market, uh, 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 there is some progress also on the side of the regulator. They have implemented uh, some sort of regulatory sandbox, as well as, as has uh, strengthened 
the support on the side of the innovation hub. So uh, they are, uh, are ready to be approached for, from the side of fintechs. And we have guided some of them uh, through the process with the Austrian regulator. Um, perhaps turn into uh, what is of interest for fintechs, what is the market from an Austrian perspective. I have uh, done a quick review of the Digital Economic and Society Index. And according to this index, around about 65 to 70% of all individuals in Austria between 16 and 74 are using online banking. So uh, for the fintechs, this is a sort of assessment uh, uh, of the market, uh, how many of, of, of individuals in Austria are, could be ready to be approached for them. Um, from uh, turning to your questions of a personal use case, what I've seen in the recent months is uh, one interesting project where a, a virtual asset currency service provider has teamed up with a third party payment service provider and uh, uh, they are uh, going through a cooperation uh, where uh, they can have uh, used experience of each other and also build up a new business model from them. It's uh, one of my special use cases, uh, what I have seen so far. So uh, there is a lot of going on on the market, I think, and it's totally right that we have the legal environment since this. And um, it's a little bit of pity that uh, there is not much more uh, available so far on real life uh, um, um, fintechs which are working closely with, with, with the banks. And of course, they are competitors to the banks. So it's clear from this side that uh, it's, it's not an easy environment for for fintechs as sort of startups. Thank you. Thank you, Philip. I think it's obvious from uh, from the answer so far that we have some uh, way to go regarding the, the use cases and the actual practical examples. Uh, Alex, what's your uh, what's your um, relevance to to open banking so far in a professional way, and what is uh, a use case that uh, personally has been uh, helpful for for you? Uh, thank you, Panagiotis. Uh, so uh, I'm here representing uh, ZTEC. Uh, ZTEC is a technology company. Uh, right now we are we have around 260 specialists and we do um, cater to customers in over 30 countries. And of course, we do have quite some fintech, fintech projects around the globe. I would mention a couple of them because uh, some of them are, are showcasing various uh, ways we can use uh, open banking. For instance, we uh, we are assisting a couple of IFNs in the United States. Uh, my favorite uh, product there is the Merchant Cash Advance, which was kind of attempted in Romania, but uh, not maybe not not with the best best approach. I would love to see that product in Romania. I think it would help uh, uh, small family business and small entrepreneurs a big deal. Uh, secondly, we launched the first micro factoring company in Romania, both as a tech uh, solution provider, but also as an investor. Uh, the name is instantfactoring.com. You can still find it online. They are still expanding right now. We're moving to Serbia and other countries in Eastern Europe. Uh, of course, we are assisting various banks and insurance companies in Romania on non-core products. Uh, but we are also delivering core products to online payment players, virtually uh, the top ones in Romania, Netopia and PayU, and recently uh, Token, who's moving to Europe as well. Uh, last but not least, we are about to launch uh, our own payments module with a lot of uh, functionality inside. Uh, um, in our uh, SAS product, Regista.ro, this product right now is uh, used by uh, close to 750 uh, local administration offices in Romania, uh, about 25% of the market. In short, we are building a new Gisheul.ro, but better, faster, and cheaper for the local administration with a lot of challenges in uh, digitalizing, uh, you know, very, very old and paper oriented processes in, uh, in uh, these institutions. It used to be much easier to build the solutions for other markets. 
because it was easier to access APIs, documentation, friendly support, countless possibilities from banks in US and other countries. Um, API connections right now, API connections with the bank can be maybe among the first ones to go in a roadmap, not the last or never. Uh, instead of having robotic automation in between uh, platforms, now we can have nice and clean API approaches. So I'm so glad we are right now in 2021 uh, seeing more action. It is not nice that we needed a European uh, uh, directive for that, PSD2. It's not nice that since 2015 until now, you know, we could have seen a bit more uh, action, but I'm happy nevertheless that it's happening. What I would like to see is I would like to see better B2C interfaces, uh, better B2B interfaces, maybe covering various use cases uh, that probably were ignored by main players because they were maybe too niched. I don't know. This is the beauty of uh, having the gates open, uh, use cases that were completely considered edge case by, uh, by a bank might actually uh, be enough to provide business to a startup. Uh, I want to see real innovation around business process and, and real needs. And that's basically what I wanted to say. I want to make sure that I thank Thinkware. We're proud to, uh, to support this hackathon event. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. So we close the round with uh, Radu. So Radu, uh, again, uh, I think you are also sitting on the technology side. So if you can also give us your experience in terms of uh, uh, supporting open finance and hopefully a couple of use cases. Yeah, thank you. So uh, I represent Qualitans. I'm a co-founder of uh, technology Bucharest. We expanded to US and Australia over organically in the last five and six years. And we managed to work in US, in California with fintechs. We are glad to see that in the last years, we managed to bring that know-how back to Europe, into Romania, partnering up with uh, some of the biggest bank, banks in Romania and creating digital products. Uh, I can uh, mention here the BCR Casana project. We partner up with BCR Erste. Uh, or uh, the Raiffeisen SME lending project or Banca Transylvania onboarding projects. So these are all projects that we did in the last few years. And, and I'm happy that we can uh, give some of the FinTech uh, agility to banks. Uh, and we can also support FinTechs on the other hand in, in scaling up products. Um, if I go to why, uh, why this hackathon, uh, I, can, uh, I, I fully agree with what Alex uh, mentioned earlier. It's, uh, it's uh, um, topics of uh, high importance. I would also add some personal uh, things here. I mean, recently I, I, I had uh, some uh, incident uh, with a relative of mine uh, who lost money. Uh, not going to back to check the account, you know, found out that some money were out of his account over the years. So <laughs> this happens and I think uh, uh, aggregation apps on, uh, on uh, open banking would give some easy tools for that not to happen. And personally, I believe uh, in um, uh, Cosmin's initiative and Finkware's initiative in building this infrastructure that we tech companies and banks and fintechs can use in, in order to create great user experience and great products for, uh, for people around us. So um, yeah, thank you again for, uh, for being here and uh, let's have a great uh, event and uh, hackathon together. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much. Um, so I, I just have one uh, favor to ask before we go to the next round because we are uh, a few people and I think it, uh, you have touched upon uh, many topics. I think it's interesting to discuss a few of them. So I would say I will try to do, uh, to go through a couple of uh, notes I have in terms of what is interesting. So I would just uh, kindly ask if we can just spend uh, each of you a couple of minutes uh, or in answering this so that we can have an opportunity for, for a next question. Otherwise, I think the, the time is not going to be, to be enough. And uh, with this kind of request, uh, 
I will try to go one by one and uh, and try to understand uh, what is very specific about what you have been uh, doing regarding open banking. And I will try to 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 ask a question that I think it might be useful for the for the rest to to think on. So if I start from the uh, big tech side, side, so let's say if I start from uh, from Madalina from uh, from Microsoft. Uh, Madalina, are you here? Can you hear us? Okay. Uh, I think Madalina is going to be back uh, soon, but uh, if I I can move to um, Raiffeisen, for example, to Tanya. Um, so I think Tanya, you have uh, developed this uh, RBI API marketplace as a one-stop shop for for banking API products for the for the group, uh, and you also are trying to build a community. Uh, so I would I would like to ask uh, very specifically, what has been the experience so far? How can somebody become part of the open banking ecosystem that you're trying to build, and uh, if you are uh, seeing that this approach uh, has been, let's say, meeting your expectations, or if you think that uh, after uh, uh, all this time that you have been uh, trying to do this, uh, uh, you are trying to to, to think uh, uh, things in a different way in terms of the uh, ecosystem and this platform approach that you're trying to, to create. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for the question. Uh, I mean, uh, with the RBI API marketplace, our uh, main goal is to kind of connect with the external community, with fintechs, with startups, with developers, uh, in order to be able to move one step closer towards open innovation. And open innovation for us is uh, an innovation where basically we are capable to expose certain set of data or services, and other teams are able to use this immediately if we talk about sandbox or test data data and innovate in that way. So we, we want to kind of skip the uh, ideation, PowerPoint discussions and all this that is just uh, moving us away from the real use case uh, or from the real solution to a problem, right? And in order to achieve this, we on one side need to enable really good sandbox, which is basically a test data uh, for uh, various uh, banking uh, you know, services that we are offering. On the other side, we have to enable a good platform for example, external developers and even business developers, not only IT developers, to come to see what we are offering and uh, to be able to use those data, right, or services which are offering via APIs. Uh, in order to become part of our community, uh, I think that RBI is quite active in this area, right? So you can simply come and register to the developer portal there which we call RBI API Marketplace. At the end there, you can see what we have as of today, but you also have a, a possibility to kind of just simply write us what is what you need as a FinTech, as a third party, as someone who wants together with us to build some new solution for our customers. And then uh, this is basically the, the interaction that we are hoping for. And this is how we really want to move closer uh, to, to building new services via open APIs. In in addition to that, uh, we have uh, an Elevator Lab, which is a big fintech partnership program. Uh, via the Elevator Lab, we really have a quite significant fintech database, and we also use this database when we are developing something new. For example, once we uh, publish new Sandbox API at the marketplace, we reach out to the community and we say, uh, hey, this is new here, please look at it tell us, is this what you need? Would you need something else? Uh, let us build the things together. So this is what we are doing. And this is all part of this big vision that we have. And this is that open APIs can enable our group to innovate in a different way and to different to discover new partnerships via open APIs. However, I have to mention that we are still at the beginning of the journey, not because of our organization, but because of the uh, market and how mature the overall ecosystem is. So uh, I think that we are still kind of all of us, all participants of the ecosystem, we are, we are learning who is now offering what and how we can innovate together. And um, I would not, I, I think that our experience is quite good until now. We do see a good feedback. We do see increase in number of developers registered the API marketplace. We do see a really good 
feedback uh, after we organize uh, some event, hackathon. Uh, we even uh, are still working with some of the teams who were part of our open banking hackathon that we organized together with Tatra Banka in Slovakia last year. So the things are happening. Uh, however, it will still take, take for sure a few years until this ecosystem can live by itself and not be managed, meaning not have traffic only once you organize something. Uh, but yeah, this is the, the uh, RBI API marketplace as the platform uh, is, is really important for us and we will kind of uh, uh, work on the overall ecosystem more and more in the following years. Okay, thank you. Very interesting. And uh, if I can just uh, use this as a basis for, for the next question, because we were discussing the marketplaces. Uh, if I go now to, to Microsoft, so to one of the big uh, tech players, I think it's really interesting what you're doing with this Microsoft commercial marketplace. Uh, and uh, I think you're providing the opportunity to again build an ecosystem. I think there was a recent example a couple of years ago, if I remember correctly, in, uh, in Italy, uh, working with a bank. And uh, if I understand this correctly, you have basically two pillars. One has to do with the Azure marketplace and the other one is the app source. So I don't know, Madalena, can you maybe explain uh, to us in a, in a nutshell, in a couple of minutes, uh, what is the strategy behind and how this strategy has been uh, working for you in terms of using open banking as a, as a basis for, for this business? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, very interesting question. So um, indeed, Microsoft has, um, unique um, go-to-market strategy and we are counting a lot on, on our partners. Um, from my role perspective, I'm covering Central and Eastern Europe, um, which is consists in 30 countries. Uh, so if I look at these 30 countries and uh, at their needs, definitely um, I see some progressed countries, some of them in some of the countries, the banks are more digitized. In others, uh, they are not so digitized and they are coming from behind. But um, for sure, the open banking topic, it's a very good one. And for me, uh, as financial services industry director for CE, it's a two-way opportunity. One, it's an opportunity to uh, position uh, for sure our cloud technology. And another opportunity is to find partners um, that have developed or they are willing to develop solutions on top of our cloud platform um, in order to answer to open banking uh, initiatives for banks or for fintechs. And indeed, the, the model that we have with our partners, um, definitely they can publish these solutions um, in the app source, they can publish uh, it in the uh, Asian marketplace, um, but I would say this is more like a generic uh, so solution. Uh, for the open banking topics, there is another model, um, which we call it uh, IP COSEL, where basically together with the partner, we are developing uh, an interesting solution for open banking for SME, for example, or for integration with uh, tourism companies uh, or any other stuff. So yeah, a partner can be a, a partner can be anybody it can be a bank or can be a, anybody who who is a partner for you. Definitely, we can speak. Uh, when we speak about partners, we can talk about ISVs. Uh, but also, what I have seen in the last years, uh, and this is a trend, especially in CE, a lot of banks they have huge developer uh, units. I see banks in Ukraine; they have, for example, eight hundred developer team. Imagine 800 developer team, you already have an ISV company inside of you. And basically that one for you, it's a revenue stream. You can start engaging those developers in order to produce banking solution and to resell it, right? Why not? I mean, 800 developers, it, it's a huge thing. Um, so we can, we are looking both uh, uh, on the ISV side ISVs that are developing open banking solutions on top of our cloud, but also we are looking on, uh, on the bank's side. Uh, they are our customers right now, but they can become our partners if they start developing by themselves interesting solutions on Azure cloud. And then for sure we can, we can engage them in this uh, IP COSEL model, for, for example. Thank you, thank you, very interesting. 
Um, now, I would say that we move now and I will try to address both uh, Radu and Christian in the same question because I think there is a relevance. So I think that uh, Radu and uh, Christian, you have launched, uh, I mean, basically, Betzere, uh, you have launched back in 2019 in Romania together with uh, Qualitans. I think you have launched this uh, home mortgages platform. I think it's called uh, Casa Mea. Uh, and I would be curious to understand if you have been uh, making any 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 use of uh, open banking in terms of uh, uh, accommodating the needs of the users in the platform. So if you have found this uh, useful and if uh, during the course of, because I think this has been launched in 2019, so during the course of uh, uh, the implementation and of uh, launching, so I think it's a couple of years uh, since you have done this, um, what are the learning points and if there is anything that is uh, that we can take uh, in terms of open banking approach. Uh, so I will try to give the floor both to you. Maybe we start with Christian and then we go to, to Radu. Uh, thank you, panelists, for the for the question. Indeed, we have a very good uh, collaboration with with Qualitans. We had a great success with the, with the custom application. Um, from what I can see is from what I can say is that um, um, with Casama, we had the first integration with our uh, um, credentials of our users uh, that are using the online banking. So basically, the Casama application is, is using the federated login, and it's integrated with with the access and with uh, with the credentials that the customers have with uh, with our digital application. So basically, this is a part of somehow connected with the open banking. Uh, because all the customers that have the digital access to our uh, George application, the, the uh, digital banking service, have also access to CASAM uh, application. Um, one of the uh, one more important one, or another important thing that we have learned from this experience with building the CASAM application together with Qualitans was the uh, design thinking, how you create a, a platform. Uh, with the feedback, constant feedback from your customer. Uh, and this was our first experience with this way of, of building a digital application. Now we have also evolved with all the other applications that we are building. We are using uh, various user experience uh, testings. So we have, uh, we are building everything on top of this uh, design thinking methodology. And uh, I think these two topics that uh, one, an integration using this open banking with, with an existing platform or with an existing uh, credentials application. And second, with a thing that the Qualitans as a fintech or as a, as a technology company uh, te uh, teach us how to do it, uh, created a very good success for, uh, for us. I, I will pass the floor to Radu because I'm, I'm sure that uh, he can continue on this or he can uh, strengthen the, the, this message. Radu, if you, if you, uh, I think it would be interesting to tell us if this indeed, uh, if it's indeed an end-to-end -end digital journey, or if you have found the need to kind of uh, combine, let's say, the offline and the online experience, and maybe add on on what just uh, Christian mentioned. Yeah, thank you. So, um, just to give you a little bit of background, so. When we are expanding internationally, 2016, we acquired uh, uh, product design and uh, experience design and prototyping company in San Francisco, was called Launch Podium. Uh, so basically, we brought this ex product experience into our, uh, Qualitans, which was mostly a technology company at that point. We had very good in engineers and development practices and reusable assets in terms of code. But we, we also integrate this know-how of building uh, products and de-risking pro products, digital products uh, with launch podium. So basically we tested this way of working initially with some international companies like IKEA or, or Virgin outside, uh, outside Europe. And then we, we uh, when we started with the BCR Erste, this project, the focus was a lot on the user experience, creating an omni-channel uh, experience for the user uh, and creating a, a lot of transparency in terms of uh, status 
when when because the mortgage experience it's pretty painful for for most of the users so we wanted to create a, a way in in which this mortgage process can be straightforward transparent of obviously uh, get more speed in terms of uh, uh, time to to cash um, and I think we managed that. We, we had a extremely uh, close collaboration with the BCR team. We worked together as an agile team together and we shared these practices. And I'm happy that BCR integrated all those practices into the day-to-day -day way of building products in the bank. So uh, uh, coming back to, to your question, uh, the roadmap we looked initially was uh, an end-to-end -end roadmap. Uh, we launched an MVP and then an extended MVP. Uh, and uh, I know that uh, the bank is, uh, is uh, aiming to add more features to, to the experience, uh, but I cannot disclose that right now. <laughs> Okay. So, uh, so, but I, I can tell you that it, it's it's not some it's a living product. It's not something that you you just uh, do it once. Yeah. You need to improve it uh, fast okay. and. Uh, yeah. If I can, if I can add uh, on top of what Radu said, is that um, this journey is it may not be one hundred percent digital at this time or uh, end to end, but. It is creating a, a, a digital flow for the experience of having or accessing a mortgage uh, with digital interactions from uh, the point of you start the application until the moment when you have everything ready with the notary, with, uh, with the, uh, um, uh, the evaluation of the house and so on. And you just bring the, all the documents together uh, at the bank and everything is and the loan is disbursed. Of course, as Radio said, we have uh, plans for this year, which is not a very, let's say, a hard secret, but indeed we want, we have a, an end-to-end -end digital flow for the unsecured uh, experience. We want also to, to upgrade the mortgage experience towards a digital end-to-end -end process. Thank you. I, I think you have started from the most difficult, let's say, product on the consumer side, the most complicated. So if you manage to do this, I understand that uh, we cannot have the end-to-end -end, uh, from the starting point. But as you mentioned at the beginning, I think once you see uh, the product evolving, you may add additional uh, use cases and that's what you probably have, have mentioned. So I think that's, uh, that's a good way to go forward. Um, now, I, I think I, I would like to switch now to, to Varangold because uh, I happen to know what you do. And basically, uh, I find it quite interesting that you have chosen uh, let's say Bulgaria as your hub for the CE and for Central Europe, let's put it like this. And I'm not sure if everybody's aware, but uh, basically Varenkol, they have a focus on marketplace banking, as uh, Sergey mentioned, and transaction banking. And I think that uh, especially the, uh, the marketplace banking, which I think is your focus, uh, as you mentioned uh, before, is a, is a quite interesting model that is also going to evolve uh, on the basis of, uh, of open banking. Um, so I would like to understand uh, a couple of use cases. For example, uh, I think somebody mentioned before uh, the Merchant Cash Advanced, which is, I would say, a typical uh, product for, uh, for this kind of banking as a service that you're trying to, to offer. So if you can just elaborate on a couple of uh, use cases that you think are relevant for the, for the region that you bring to the market, because there are not so many places who are focusing on this. So I find it quite interesting that you have uh, chosen to, to have a CE dedicated branch and understand what are these couple of use cases or focus points and how they relate to, to open banking. So from IOTIS, uh, outside to what people may expect, I think what the industry regionally struggles is marketing and size. So what we see here in CE is that there is extremely profitable models. Unfortunately, banking, as we know it, the main street banks are covering 99% of the products and they're doing quite a good job. As Christian said, and Rado and uh, Tanya, all the big banks are really pushing into that area. So there is not really a meaningful case for the smaller players to really capture 
uh, how to say, a size that is attractable for a bigger investors to enter there and further develop the model, as you can see it in UK and Western Europe. So now directly to the question, we are quite good at what we do in Western Europe and specifically, I would say Germany, DAF region, UK in a way, because we have a branch in London also. And we decided to be on the frontier to what may happen here in the region of Central Eastern Europe. Tanya may know, and all the guys from Romania may know that in all the international banks, uh, it was for many years that where the growth in our group will come, of course, from CE. So in every bank that you go, Unicredit, Raiffeisen, and whatever, it is written with big letters that CE is our growth engine. Okay, so we are in CE and what is happening in CE? Probably mainstream products, as you know it, out of the shelf stuff, it's really working. It is nicely penetrated, probably online banking lagging behind, but it's facing up. COVID helped a lot in this area. But again, <clears throat> if you start to really look, and I like very much what Tana said, look into CE, not as a helicopter view, geographical common place. If you look at it with the specialties, with the different legislations, different market penetration, advancement of banking here and there, you start to understand that you need to be really niched into the specific market. And this is where FinTech steps in, I think, and I'm a big believer into that, that Basically now banks are selling squares to everybody who needs square. And if you go with a request for a triangle, it's very difficult. You know, you kind of stuck into that. They try to explain that you need to turn into square once again, but you say, but I'm triangle. I, there is no chance I turn into square. You know, I, I cannot feel your requirements. And this is where FinTech steps in. And what we saw in our models is that we are supporting platforms that are attracting those niches. In our strategy set, we are going to serve the underserved for different reasons. But what we actually wanted to say is that let's give some juice, some power to those platforms to really attract the attention of the customers and actually chasing their banks and together working into a solution that may help them all, you know, go to the next level. So as a use case, I start from my uh, experience. When we initially opened the branch in Bulgaria, 2018, we invested into a platform, a peer-to-peer -peer platform called Clear. It is three years from now. Uh, there is a VC investment from a local VC fund. So they attracted 800K as a, I would say, round A code, if you want, uh, investment. And now they will launch a very heavy marketing campaign. And that's why I came back to my initial thought. Now they have the marketing power to grow and really show to the market what they are. And we are very curious to see if they can really show this J curve that we are expecting to see into their model. Back to what you've said, in Western Europe, UK, we are partnering with one, with not one, with many different marketplaces, which in uh, some of their cases are looking into bringing open banking in their models for lending business, the you know, out of your mind idea is improve your scoring, attract your customers, understand more, provide them more, how to say, way to interact with you and basically become more loyal using your whatever solution you're going to do there. But we don't see many scalability there. Probably this will come, but ideally our clients are using us first to receive the juice to strengthen their coverage and sorry to their presence and to become relevant to their markets. And second, we would like to together approach different markets where they, for some reason, are being, how to say, tackled with a specific regulation. Namely, for instance, in, uh, I think uh, it was Slovakia, and we have somebody, Tomas, there, he can confirm, but factoring is without a license. While in Bulgaria, it is with a license. So if a Slovak company has to come in Bulgaria, they need to have a license to do that. Ideally, they will look for a partner like us where we can front that service for them. And here you can think of some open banking angles, which we can together think of and work around, but it is still very early into the beginning. So in a nutshell, it is interesting indeed why we decided to be here. There is numerous models that are very interesting. Unfortunately, 
due to lack of marketing and size on the markets they are tackling, there is not great growth potential. But we firmly believe if we find the right platforms, which are basically built to grow globally, and we partner with them at this early, early, early stage, we can be the ones that can find the next unicorn coming out of the region. And if we be really concrete, we already saw some unicorn, few unicorns born into the region. And I think those will become more and more, how to say, frequent. So we want to be here. <clears throat> Thank you, Sergey. Thank you very much. Um, given that we have eight minutes to go, I would say that uh, kind of requ kind of request to 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 provide uh, uh, short answers. So I would like to go now to OTP. Um, I think you do have uh, similar to what Raifizen is doing. I think you do have one uh, developer portal and a sandbox. So you are providing all of this. Um, but I would like to ask uh, the following question. I think we have seen many players, including banks, as you do, and fintechs developing open APIs. What do you think are the circumstances based on which uh, banks can consider developing an open, an open API approach, meaning a platform approach? At the end of the day, I think it goes down to you integrating my API, or do I need to integrate with you? What are the implications of this, and do you think that this uh, may, makes sense for you? Uh, also, in in relation to what you're trying to do with the developer portal that you have uh, uh, launched, yeah, I, I think it's a mix of both. And uh, as a group, we approach a little bit different uh, this thing with the open APIs and open banking because in in region also, as our colleagues mentioned, uh, we are still at the beginning with all this and in, in the in the uh, banking specifically and in our group we have taken a different let's say approach and we are trying to to make a, a internal uh, innovation and supporting in the same time uh, the fintechs and companies that are in in this uh, in this area and uh, coming up with new innovative ideas to to implement uh, all this. So we, we don't have a, a, a fully internal uh, uh, development. We, we just uh, have uh, uh, this uh, program that is supporting uh, uh, companies and startups. Uh, and uh, from, from this, we, we are uh, giving them a sort of um, a testing ground for products and services. So practically, this is why I said that it's both ways. We are, in some cases, we are implementing uh, their APIs. In some other cases, we are putting uh, our APIs. So we are uh, at, at the, let's say, at the uh, beginning with bringing on the market something uh, for for uh, uh, our business needs. So we are supporting uh, uh, the new players in the fintech industry. Thank you, Livio. Um, if I may go now to CMS, to both Catalina and, and, and Philip. Uh, and I, I have a very specific question because I think that you are uh, advising mostly on law and tax issues. So I don't know, have you seen from your experience over the past uh, couple of years, any tax use cases uh, in relation with open banking, for example, using a real-time transaction data from banking product to streamline tax uh, determination, automatic calculation, things like this. Do you see any, uh, have you seen any similar use cases? And if not, uh, what is the what are the trends that you uh, have seen so far? Maybe we start with Philip and then we go to Catalin. <clears throat> no, I have not seen such a use case, uh, to be honest. Um, thinking about what would be uh, best comparable one, but I, I don't think any any use case I have in mind will fit to this. Use cases, use cases. It's hard hard to say what uh, uh, what would be the best. Well, <laughs> it's you know as we are talking here, it's all about the user experience. And if a product is a good product, then it will be. Uh, will become or the, the, the business will become a unicorn and uh, uh, it's, it's, it doesn't matter in which market it would be 
we develop it will be broadened out and it will 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 roll out through the European Union and where everywhere where it's possible uh, uh, the the the, the <coughs> users will will be keen to get this product if this is a really really good one. Um, Katalin, okay. do you have anything to add? If we are well, it, actually, in Hungary, we really didn't see such a use case as well. Uh, in Hungary, the AISPs are a little bit stronger than PISPs in, in the open banking era. And especially the EB link service providers, what we see, for, for small and medium sized enterprises, for SMEs, uh, they provide uh, recounting information services and uh, and uh, and uh, related services to to businesses. This is the most popular AISP in in Hungary. So the trends are here that uh, most of the service providers in PSD two provides their services on a cross-border basis um, with a passported license. Uh, there are almost 70 uh, passported licenses in, in, in Hungary and, and service mm -hmm. providers and only seven uh, home Hungarian-based um, AISP or PISP in Hungary. But uh, as, as I, I've seen it in, in statistics, the situation is, is almost the same in, in the Czech Republic or in other CAE countries, of course, except Poland. And uh, Austria is a better place as well. Uh, however, in, in Slovakia, Slovenia, Hungary, uh, the, the trends are the cross-border licenses and, and uh, the uh, passported licenses in this field. Thank you. It's the same in uh, Austria. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just to confirm, it's the same in Austria. We have a lot of payment service institutions which uh, have passported their license from uh, from their home member state. So, uh, yeah. payment service institutions with a local Austrian license, they are not that much. Yeah, that, that's my experience as well. I mean, that's the, the so-called cross-border model, which is uh, one of the benefits of being in the EU, right? So, uh, make makes total sense. Uh, if I can quickly now go to Thomas, and Thomas, I mean, uh, you have mentioned yourself that you have uh, launched uh, the first uh, new bank in, uh, in Slovakia. So if you can just tell us how you are using open banking to attack the market and what are the, 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 uh, the, the helping points that you have seen so far. So what are you doing differently and how you are using, how are you employing open banking to, uh, as a new bank to, to attack the market? Is it partnerships? Uh, is it uh, specific other use cases? Uh, wh what is your, uh, let's say, focus point? Mm -hmm. uh, as I already said, uh, there are not uh, many examples present in Slovakia uh, of open banking in, uh, in real life. Uh, what we, uh, so we as a bank uh, just provide our uh, PSD2 uh, APIs to, uh, to, to third parties, for example, or to other banks. Uh, but there are non existing model uh, in Slovakia yet that, that would uh, that would be uh, um, interesting in, in something. What we are, uh, or I would like to uh, to answer the, the previous question. So how we support or how will we how we would like to support uh, fintechs in uh, in building open market uh, open banking market in Slovakia? Uh, we have our own fint uh, uh, fintech fund. Uh, it's a uh, it's a venture capital fund, and uh, we would like to uh, cooperate with uh, companies coming to Slovakia, building open banking uh, infrastructure in Slovakia, for example. Uh, that's how we would like, for example, to support uh, Thinkware uh, and uh, to find uh, uh, some possible uh, cooperation models. Uh, this, this is the, the first uh, um, first uh, step of the strategy in general. Uh, and uh, as, as the bank, we are not using any open banking use case uh, yet. Uh, what we are interested in, uh, or personally what I am interested in, uh, is uh, 
micro investment apps, uh, for example, uh, very uh, famous in the United Kingdom. I don't know whether you know uh, Plum. Uh, and they are a non-bank or a fintech. Uh, fintech app. Uh, you can link your uh, whatever bank account in the UK and uh, based on some roundups or something like that, uh, using your, your main current account in, in your bank, you just send uh, uh, micro sums uh, to your investment uh, to your investment app, uh, and that's how they uh, teach how to invest. So this is, this is a good use case. Yeah, uh, this is something that that I am very interested in because uh, uh, at the same time, uh, investing in Slovakia is uh, uh, is a new market uh, uh, so far. So uh, this is something that uh, we can. Uh, where we can use open banking to uh, teach people how to invest uh, microsums so that they can see that invest, investing is something that uh, they can be better off at. Uh, and what we are struggling with or, or why I think that uh, it is uh, there are no many existing use cases in Slovakia is uh, the way of implementation, for example, uh, as uh, Katalin uh, said already, uh, AISP uh, is already present in Slovakia. Uh, it's uh, quite uh, well implemented, but uh, where we are struggling uh, is PISP services. Uh, and for example, uh, uh, in my opinion, just to uh, if you if you if you have to authorize every single operation or every single transaction. Using a third party or some uh, some uh, aggregator application or something, uh, this is something that is not very smooth use case to use, and uh, uh, I don't think people will adapt uh, on it. Or, for example, in my uh, my preferred use case to uh, to have some micro investment platform or something like that, uh, you have to authorize the the micro sums every single day to to send the money to your investment app. This is something that is not very um, uh, convenient for, for customers, I think. It, it could be the killer of the use case, I would say. It goes back to the phase two. So the authorization can take place only once, and then it's, uh, it's valid. But that's one of the kind of next phase scenarios. I think in the UK, they have been a bit more advanced, and they have been looking at this. But in Europe, PSD2 has not been addressing this, uh, this point mm -hmm. so far. Um, Thank you, Thomas. I think Cosmin is looking at me because we are four minutes uh, over time, but uh, very quickly. If I I'm sorry. Go, I'm sorry. <laughs> no problem. Uh, if I can go to, to Alex, so last but not least, uh, and if I can ask uh, Alex, uh, so I think you have been, uh, you're a software provider, so you're working with many industries, so not only financial services, but I think you have uh, been working with a lot of the players in financial services, as you have said, in, uh, in Romania. Can you tell us maybe how open banking has changed your work and your approach with your clients uh, over the past uh, years. So is there any difference that you have seen because of this or not yet? Uh, you're on mute, Alex. Unfortunately, not yet. Uh, I was basically, uh, you know, chiming in with uh, Thomas before because we have so many use cases that are not allowed yet by the API provided by the banks. And uh, we don't see that uh, opening like, OK, let's meet and tell us what you need because you're going to be con consuming our services. I, we don't see that type of approach, unfortunately, here. I am happy that I think where it's uh, managing to, you know, push the line, push the line always and open this because we do have customers, we do have startups, fintech or not, that need this uh, type of integration. And uh, their use case may be simple, but uh, just to give you an example, when we have built um, uh, instantfactoring.com, which uh, at the time was only active in Romania, uh, our promise to the customer was to deliver the micro uh, financing, the, the, uh, the amount of money they got for their invoice within 24 hours. And sometimes we even managed to do it in the same business day. So how do you achieve that is by automating all the processes. Even the simple fact of just uh, shifting money from maybe one account to another because uh, uh, maybe if you want to move fast, you want to have uh, money accounts in different banks. 
you look at the uh, the bank that the the company uh, the appliant uh, appliant has and you want to send money from that account it's a simple process just log in, in my own company account send money to my customer because i approved his uh, micro factoring request uh, so it's easy can you do it right now in romania and uh, so uh, going further to thomas uh, topics like oh, you know if you have the authorization once can you do more well you could do so much more and i was mentioning before merchant cash advances for instance you could even kind of uh, cover a scenario close to that if you would have access to the account maybe with some limits of course uh, because then it would be easy maybe to see at the, what he gets in from the POS and from other uh, sources and deduct 1%, 2%, 3%. So the problem is that, you know, the door is still not opening. So no, the, the answer is the life uh, of startups and company that want to actually innovate and automate has not changed yet. But that's why we're here. Thank you, Alex. And just to add that, I think I know a couple of cases where especially in Europe, we have a few fintechs that are tackling this uh, merchant cash advance topic. And I do know that they are using open banking mostly to go to the account and verify the, the volumes of the customer. Uh, yep. And what you just mentioned is a, is a second use case, but I think this yes. is a very relevant, uh, it's a facilitator, it's an enabler. It's not a, a huge uh, game changer, but it's uh, one of the bits and pieces that is- uh, Sure, I mean, it, it's, it's good to, uh, you know, it's good to aim for the stars. But sometimes it's good just to be able to make a simple automation. Good. Thank you very much. Uh, I give uh, the floor back to you, Cosmin. Sorry for we are eight minutes. Thank late, you very much. It so it was no no issue. We are uh, we are all, also in the Central and Eastern Europe. We are not that uh, that German uh, while uh, when uh, handling the time. Uh, but it was quite uh, a very fruitful uh, discussion. Uh, uh, for me, it was uh, overwhelming to, to, to have this exchange of ideas on top of uh, on, on the open banking uh, 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 team, uh, which is the team that makes me uh, not sleep at night uh, since uh, three years ago. Uh, I still believe that, uh, okay, we are in the tricky study of this open banking, but look, there is a lot of energy uh, to discuss and to look up uh, for uh, solutions and uh, uh, to have still the optimism that uh, the things will go. Uh, there are small steps to be done. And I believe even this open banking hackathon that we are trying to build is like a small step to, uh, to, to increase the awareness and to move the things further. Thank you very much uh, for, for your time. And thank you very much for being, you know, friends with open banking movement in Central Eastern Europe. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye. Bye. See you Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you soon in person, hopefully. Bye. Very, very soon. Yeah. Bye. Bye. See you. Bye. 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 Bye.